go. Michael Andretti that leads the race. Jill DeFerrin has dropped a second and is locked in a battle trying to hold off Brian Herta and Jacques Villeneuve. Also by way of note, Adrian Fernandez, who started 18th, has moved up to 5th, and Jimmy Vassar is up in 6th right now. Jack Aroot? Well, let's update you on Michael Andretti. We said he has a wing problem, and pieces are beginning to fall off. It looks like maybe part of the wing attenuator on the front came off. That will create some handling problems at high speed. But, you know, Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company has bought, brought a brand new tire here this year to the Cleveland Burke Lakefront Airport. I asked the engineers what they had done differently. They said, basically, it's the same compound, but we concentrated in this area, the crown area of the tire, to create better grip. And so far, their performance, it looks as if they not only did their homework, but they'll pass the final exam. Well, Jack, in the season-long struggle between Goodyear and the Firestone Company, who, of course, is back into racing, uh, Goodyear has managed to win all of the races and now extend their consecutive race win streak to 314. So we've heard a lot about Firestone this year, but Goodyear has really fought them off beautifully. Whatever Michael's problem is, I can tell you that he is staying with the pack. He's not as a leader. Usually you see Michael pull away. You know, he's able to pull that little bit of edge out. But I think that um, everybody is staying. The pack is staying with him. And I think it possibly could be he has also lost um, an air brake duct, which means that his brakes wouldn't be as well. And I see that that's where everybody seems to be able to close it. His brakes are not functioning as well. And he has a high-speed problem. Uh, it really could be an issue. He just had not had the speed all day. I mean, it's a series of circumstances that have brought him up here into the lead. I don't think we will see him pull away, particularly as long as he's got Scott Pruitt, that car right behind him, to act as a buffer between him and his nearest pursuers. He's driving a really canny race today. Let's go back and take a look. We'll keep track of this battle, believe me. That restart once again, maybe we can get an idea of where he actually got chopped, though it wasn't obvious before where the contact came. It may have come right there. I think it might have happened. It was actually with DeFerrin. I think that's who uh, he had the contact with. Good call. Jack Aroot. Well, all the way Lynn and Sam have been discussing back and forth what fell off the car, that's exactly what the crew has to do. You know, they try to radio in, the driver tries to relate as to what's happening, but this Whoa. isn't a Whoa. Oh, look at Herta. Herta comes inside of Villeneuve, and that battle continues. Villeneuve can hold him off as they go to the lakeside straight. Wow, great overhead views now on board with Herta. Oh, what a super battle this has been. You know, on the widest track they run on all year, we have seen the closest wheel-to-wheel -wheel competition. Boy, was that a thrill. Well, as you know, Sam, no matter how wide the track is, there's still <laughs> one lane on the racetrack that is the line is where you want to be. So it all funnels right. down very quickly. Also, I think there's a, a diminution of the fear factor, don't you? Here, you know you're not going to get badly hurt in most of them. What Sam's trying to say is that there's grass out there that you can drive off of. Grass. Well, thank you for, like thank you for translating grass. it. Yeah. <laughs> you got diminution of the grass. <laughs> Look at this, Gilda oh, Farron moves down to the be inside. Gilda Farron to the inside takes Michael there now, and charges on Villeneuve. DeFerrin is in trouble. DeFerrin gets is. pushed off, gets tangled with Scott Pruitt. DeFerrin's there. day appears to be over. Michael has the lead solidly now. He had just gotten past Michael, and he is trying to get them to get his car back going. That's Luke DeFerrin, his father. He can't believe it. As DeFerrin has run into trouble in other races, very late in the game, so has he here again. This is the fight for second. As Hurt and Villeneuve go wheel to wheel, two corners now. Is this going to end up in trouble? Forget that line about one line on the racetrack. They're doing this double for sure. Unbelievable. DeFerrin obviously angered by what happened. You can't go too abreast everywhere, though, and that's that's the turn that also had the marbles, even though we had the, the dryer out there to try to push them off. Oh, what a sad moment for Jill DeFerrin. The day truly belonged to him. Would have been a great birthday present, 60th birthday for Jim Hall. Now Michael Andretti runs alone with Herta and then Bill Neff closing down. Adrian Fernandez, the next car in the order. Herta has driven himself one terrific race to emerge in second. Now taking a look down from the Honda helicopter and its helicam. Again, looking out at the lakeside straight. 
And just as we talk about Herta, Jimmy Vassar on the same team, Ganassi's team, emerges in fourth place. So that team is having a great day, having not figured much in the early running. I think there's been a lot of outstanding performances today. And I think one of the things that may have occurred that, uh, oh, on that no. incident. Oh, no. And there was one of the outstanding performances that obviously has had a terrible Adrian misfortune. Adrian Fernandez was on his way to a great day, and he stopped by the edge of the course. We don't have a clue as to why he's out there. So let's go and take a look back. This will be Michael's onboard camera in that confrontation with the Farron. Now that's Pruitt coming across the front. Pruitt is two laps back. Oh, and he traps the Farron to the inside. That's the point I was going to make was that I think that Pruitt, even though he was able to run with the leaders, he was two laps back. The Farron really thought he could go for that. Boy, the Farron De and Pruitt. Yeah. Pruitt yeah. on the right in the uh, red suit. I suspect the argument there is that Farron felt that because Pruitt was two laps back that he should not have vied for that corner. Yeah. And now the word is that Michael has begun to slow. So we keep an eye on Brian Herta, who closes behind Michael now. And indeed, he seems to be catching him. Just a year and a week ago, Brian Herta injured so badly at Toronto. His career seemed to be uh, at least on hold temporarily as his legs recovered. He managed to come back, get this ride. Then he had a good start to the season, a bad middle part of the season. Look at him now. Here comes Herta as he makes his move on Michael, and he's got him with two laps to go. But no! Michael comes back as Herta falters. But look at Villeneuve. The Villeneuve white flag comes in the out. Villeneuve comes in on the charge. The white flag is out. Two miles to go. One lap as Villeneuve moves for the lead. Anything is possible. Herta tries to play catch up now. Just a little dirt to put onto the track. I think Herta missed a gear. I don't think he's in real mechanical trouble. I think he missed a shift. That's why he dropped suddenly back. Final set of corners now for these two. Jack Belnav has it. But Herta now has the challenge. Can he come up and close on Belnav? This is Belnav's canniest race. He's driven great races all year. This is his smartest, most patient and he will extend his championship. Quick little straight away ahead. Jack Villeneuve and then Brian Herta as Villeneuve screams for the checkered flag. Herta can't catch him. Villeneuve takes the win, taking the lead in the last lap. Brian Herta comes across in second. His teammate Vassar in third. Bobby Rahal in fourth. Jack Villeneuve has scored the victory here on the Burke Lakefront Airport, his fourth of the year and the fifth of his career. Back here in Victory Lane, Jack Villeneuve away from his car getting the congratulations of everybody. Getting the kiss. And Jack, describe the emotions of that last lap because boy, everything broke loose. Oh yeah, that was tough. Uh, you know, uh, the car, we had a pretty little downforce and uh, the tires went down pretty quickly and uh, this yellow allowed us to cool down the tires and to be strong for the end and we could fight and then when brian went for the for the hole and took michael there was still a yellow flag they both screwed up and, and slowed down and i just went for the hole what about the chase for the point standings this was such a disciplined race for you and team green yeah when i couldn't fight i thought okay let's hope this race finishes soon because i had a hard time to stay there and get some more points but when we had the yellow i knew we could cool down the tires and that i could push hard for the last 10 laps and I would have a go at it, and uh, it worked out. Let's check in with Gary Gerald. Well, I don't know how you put in words the disappointment this young man must be facing right now. Gilles, you lead this race. It looked like you got everybody covered. What happened there with that five laps to go? Well, Pruitt was in between me and Michael and really making it difficult for me to race against Michael. I wanted to have a shot at Michael, and I thought that we could have as he was slowing down a little bit in the last few laps, and he, he caught traffic, and him and Pruitt slowed coming into the back straight, and I had a run at both, and I passed Michael, and I was halfway past Pruitt, and uh, he went fighting for the braking area with me like we were fighting for the lead. I just, uh, I don't understand, I'm very disappointed. I had a close encounter with him earlier on in the race, which baffled me as well. I mean, uh, I in, your, in your young racing career, have you ever had a disappointment like this one? No, this for sure beats everything <laughs> I had in the past. I mean, I, I think we had a fantastic car, 
the Penzoya team did a fantastic job. We had the good pit stops, you know, we led the, the whole day comfortably. I had the problems on the last restart. It was just a shame. Thank you, Gilles. Paul? And there sits the car by the edge of the course, still to Ferran's mouth. After the checkered flag, this occurred between Robbie Gordon and Michael Andretti. As he just snapped into the side of him. So we'll be back with more from Burke Lake Front after these messages. Well, there have been some remarkable results here today. Here are the unofficial results as you look down the list. Jimmy Vassar started in 15th position, came up to third. Ray Hall started back in 11th. This is Herta's best finish thus far and Parker Johnstone's best finish thus far. So a lot of people with much to prove as they came here today, and they certainly had a great day. Let's go to Jack. Well, big day for Chip Ganassi, third place to Jimmy Vassar. Brian Herta, second place. Your thoughts on that last? lap well you know we knew michael had a problem and i caught him there uh, i wasn't sure if the yellow was still up with the fair and i got by him and i thought you know if the yellow is still up I, I better lift off so i lifted off and let him back by and unfortunately uh you know uh, jacques got back by too it was a great race we had a great duel and uh, i just feel terrific i want to thank all the crew on the target scotch team who stuck by me through the tough times and you know this one's definitely for those guys a lot of celebration in ohio tonight gary gerald well robbie gordon wanted to be a part of that celebration but not tell us now about this incident there at the end of the race with michael andretti and the contact well you know we were we we're running um i tried to put a move on michael and, and jill going down in turn one and um and he gave me a flat tire so then at the end we were just shaking our fists at each other and these, these cars have got heavy steering we just barely touched tires are you going to have punitive action do you think from indycar officials i don't think so i mean i think it's it was good clean racing but um you know two flats for michael and Dreddy in one race just doesn't count there you have it from robbie gordon and there you see it so michael Andretti and robbie gordon together and uh, the heavy explanation steering. from robbie well the race is done here jack Villeneuve has done it again and done it in the last couple of laps so now you can sail on home out there well, round 12 of the PPG IndyCar World Series certainly had its share of excitement. And with his move in the last laps there, Jack Villeneuve was able to extend his points lead. Consider without some of the confrontations today what this points chart might look like at this point. And in the Nations Cup, well, Canada closes in on the United States once again. So that battle continues. And the PPG Cup battle is not nearly over. There's still plenty of points left in the season, despite that lead by Jack Villeneuve. Next week, we'll be at the Michigan 500. Lynn St. James will be driving there for Sam Posey, Lynn, Jack, and Gary. Thanks a lot for joining us. Join us in a week, and before we leave, let's take a look at some of the great highlights of this wonderful weekend with the IndyCars in Cleveland.